Kicked Eric out. Okay, the stream's on. Kicked Eric out. Here I am. It's Joanne Manji. Uh, it's my, I'm here for the rest of the week. We've got some really exciting things going on. Um, and all I have to say to Eric is I'm in his hot seat and possession is nine tenths of the law. So, <laughs> okay. So today uh, you think you're seeing Sherry McGraw, but guess what? Best laid plans, stuff happens. She's not feeling well. I couldn't make her feel guilty enough. So we have a surprise guest, real big surprise. Uh, we have David LaFell here. I can't believe it. My heart is pounding. You see these images here. This is David. And he's going to, uh, well, we're going to let him tell you what he's, he's going to do today. David, do you want to just say, and then, and then after you say what we're going to do, I have to just do a couple of things. So say what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to talk about drawing and stress the importance of gesture drawing and how it relates ultimately to seeing and to painting. And, and not just with, uh, not just with figures. It's gesture, not, not gesture with everything. With everything, yes. Yeah, which is I find really interesting. Okay, so uh, we just have a couple of things we have to mention. Um, it's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Joanne Manji. Okay. So like, you know, I just want you to know, Eric's got the best people. He does. I've known him for a long time. And they sent me a little bit of a script and, and, you know, best laid plans. We had Sherry, but now we, we have David, David LaFell. So uh, it's just going to be amazing today. And I just want to mention, uh, we want to do our uh, giveaways for today. We want to make, oh, easel brush clip. Everybody's loving that. Um, and then let's see, we had a winner yesterday was Kathy Uffin from Canada. And she got the uh, Eric's marketing book. Everybody loves that. And then, uh, oh, this, I need this. 10 steps to become a high level figure and portrait artist. Um, so you just have to go to realismlive.com slash ebook. Okay. So apparently I can get that too. So I, I need that. Um, all right. I think we can switch it over to David because we don't want to keep him waiting. Right, David? Yes. All set to go. I'm all set to be a poor substitute for Sherry. Ah, uh, never a poor substitute. I love you both. I love you both. Right now, I love you more, though. <laughs> Joanne. Oh, oh, she's still there. Darn. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> okay, David, take it away. Okay. Well, as I said, I'll try to substitute the best I can for Sherry, who is such a queen of queen drafts person, really just a marvelous, marvelous, I guess, draftsman, draftswoman, drafts person. Uh, she draws like an angel. So I thought I would talk substituting for her about gesture drawing and, and drawing in general, of course. Now, Gesture drawing, what's important about, to me and to you, I hope, what's important about gesture drawing is, and what you're drawing when you're doing a gesture drawing, is you're drawing movement. So whether you're looking at a model doing one minute or two minute poses, you're not drawing anatomy, you're drawing movement and movement 
movement is important not only in drawing but in painting to see movement. So the two things uh, that are important to be aware of are light and movement as the sculptor contemporary of Rodin, Madara Rosso said, since light is such an important part of our existence, any work of art that does not, is not concerned with light has no reason to be brought into existence. And I can say the same for movement since all life is movement. There's no such thing as a static in life. Light, light moves, people move, animals move, plants, insects, time. So light and movement are the two interesting things to try to capture on a flat surface. So when you're doing a gesture drawing, you're not drawing anatomy. You're drawing, you're trying to draw the movement, and let's say with a model, uh, a human model, female or male, you're trying to see how simply you can convey the movement of the pose that you're looking at in one minute or two minute uh, time increments. Uh, when I went to Parsons, our gesture drawings were one minute. We had one minute. Uh, now I know uh, with the most sketch groups, they have two minute gesture drawings. Uh, you adjust to the time that uh, is necessary to convey, as I said, the movement. So, you know, it just, uh, I, and of course I can look at some of Sherry's drawings, uh, but let's say, and normally starting, you know, have some idea of the head, you know, how brief, and then uh, if, if, the, if the body is twisting this way with the, the this arm or hand support, so you're trying to just very simply get the gesture without a net, me and if the person is seated, I have, I'll go into it a little bit since. So this slope of the body is residing in this pelvic area. You see, maybe the gesture of the leg here or this one coming out. You see, it's not so much drawing anatomy, but just trying to convey in any way the whole, the whole gesture, you see. So, but as you're drawing, you're looking ahead to, so this slope, you know, this is stretched out to this hand and arm here. You see, you're just making abstract marks, not trying to be accurate in terms of uh, anatomy, you want to convey the action. And the importance of that is not just in the drawing itself, but it's enabling you to go beyond what you see into a more abstract realm. You see, when you're drawing anatomy and features, the tendency is to be uh, the tendency initially certainly is to try to copy what you're seeing, but having lines that don't exist anatomically, 
but convey motion, movement, you're in a different realm of abstraction. And ultimately, the best representational painting is abstract underneath the superficial appearance of features, arms, legs, you know, eyes, nose, mouth. A good artist, or, or an artist, I should say, saying artists are, or, as differentiated from painters, artists see the abstraction beyond the features, the superficial features. And by superficial, I just mean the top surface, not superficial in uh, a literary, literary sense. So gesture drawing is gives you gives you a chance to go beyond the particular, the personal, and see something that only each of you can convey with just a few lines. Another way to do it, for example, if you had a, a head and the body was twisted a particular way, you could just, you know, make like a tornado shape and then give it, so, you know, give it a feeling or, or the leg, you see. So, and then, let's say you have the gesture, the whole gesture of the head spiraling down, you see. So if, if the body is going away from you, if, or if this is cl closer, you see, you just have like this little tornado or, or cyclone shape. And then you, you give it a dimensional quality, the same, you know, the, the arm is coming forward and the hand is ultimately ends here, but this is just, so there are different ways to portray the gesture of what you're looking at. But as I said, the important thing is to relieve your mind from thinking the anatomy is what tells you about the gesture where it's quite the opposite. The, the gesture tells you what anatomy to put onto the gesture drawing. So for example, if you have a teacher telling you you have two minutes to do a gesture drawing, a series of, or a series, and then you, you make your abstraction of the gesture. And then all of a sudden, let's teach it. Well, I'll give you five more minutes, which would trigger the response. Oh, now I can put in muscles and indications of you know, uh, muscles, bone, tendon, whatever strikes you, features. But what you have to realize, you have to keep your mind focused, focused, so that if you have five more minutes to add to your two minute gesture drawing or one minute gesture drawing, you try to put on only the anatomy that expresses the initial gesture. You don't just start to look for any kind of anatomy that strikes you, but you look, you know, how, it, let's say, some, how this side stretches and this side, of course, is all accordion, but how the pectorals. Uh, or the rib cage, you see, 
something that enhances your initial gesture. So you, you start to develop, to develop a very keen way of seeing, very consistent, very focused rather than diffuse. So you just don't, as I started, you don't just scatter shot, oh, I'll, oh, I like the way this looks. But you look for, you know, if this leg is stretched out, how to get this, you know, stretched out to reside in the knees. You're not only, you're looking where the action starts and where it culminates, as I said with this, how it culminates. When you're drawing this, you're thinking where it culminates. So you develop a very keen way of seeing. And as so even when you're painting, wherever you're painting, you're not just looking at that specific spot, but you see the whole, the whole painting where when you start, you already are focused on where it will finish. So that's all starts with a gesture drawing. So, that's really fascinating, <laughs> David. I love the tornado. You love the tornado. Yeah, I love the tornado. Well, because it, it's, it's easy mentally, it's kind of easy, easier to see that, you know, to put it down. Um, you know, which way the body is, is going. Yes. And the other, it, of course, drawing the figure, it, you, have, you realize that if you have the head and the neck, the body is just a pear shape. Comes in like that. Of course, a woman, there's a bigger, usually a bigger base to the pair. So, but the rib cage here coming from so is very narrow. And then and then the pelvis. So the, the collarbone and men's collarbones are longer. Women's is shorter. So the and that fills the space, the trapezius back there, and the deltoid fills the space. Now, as I said, with women, collarbone is much shorter. So with women, you'll notice that the arm always seems very close to the body space where with men you get more of a space the armpit you know more noticeable women it's very very tight but my point really is that you can just make a nice pear shape for the body and add fill it out add the arms and get as a the trapezius the deltoid, you see. Wow. Hey, what, you know, that other thing that you, you've done where, like if the arm is stretched out and then you'll start with where the hand is and then go back rather than try and match the line from the shoulder out to the hand. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Well, that, so like in this, people have trouble with foreshortening but if you start, you know, way back and get bigger and bigger, you see, you can twist the body, you know, with the head way back here and the body coming forward. You know, even if the, the leg is in front and you can't see, you have a sense of what's happening where you can't that you have this cyclone, tornado, pear shape, you know, whatever, leading you back from, so it's a, a nice 
way to uh, get a handle on foreshortening. I mean, and but even but speaking of pairs, so even uh, fruit has a gesture. So if we did an actual pear, you see, it, it has its own gesture or fruit, you know, could be squat and wide or tall and thin. A vase, you know, has an elegant uprightness to it sometimes. Horses, you know, so if you wanted to draw a horse, you know, let's say back view, you have the rump. The gesture of the leg. And you want this to go back there. So you have the same kind of gestural movement, the neck, the head, you see. So you, you can You give new meaning to doodling. Yeah. You see, so it, it applies, it applies to everything to see the gesture. I love that. Yeah. And and the say if you don't know, even if you don't know horse anatomy, but let's say this leg is forward up, this muscle has to be full and tense and underneath has to be stretched out just like a human arm or a leg. So you can, even if you're not, a, don't know much about a horse anatomy, you can, oh, it's a little bit, I didn't give enough. But in any case, it's the same for all creatures. If a muscle is tense and it's full, the underside has to be stretched out. So uh, uh, as a, like in a leg, it's, all, it's always a high, like a hip, high, low, I mean, short, long, short, long, and the opposite, short, uh, long, short, long, short, long, short, you see. So it it works the same for animals as well as humans. It's never club clump, you see. And the other important thing, is there anything else I should say? <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah, this is fabulous. Is the other thing about working around is it takes you away from just seeing an outline as the edge of it, as an edge of a form that you, even when you're making a line, you're conscious that you're doing something that has volume. So, as I said, so that's what's important about drawing. You don't have to worry about value, color, impasto, it allows you to see very simply and clearly. And the other important thing about drawing is it's a lot of fun, you know, and as I just want to gesture. Guys, make it fun. Trees, you know, that you're trying to get the up, you know, the trunk of the tree and the branches, you see, you're not just copying, you're trying to get the feeling. Some trees cause them very angular, others very graceful, but you're drawing what the tree is doing. You see, So you're always drawing beyond what you're seeing in an abstract realm.
you see, rather than just copying. So it's a it's a great pathway to ultimately painting where you're still seeing the same, the gesture of color, the gesture of movement, the gesture of light. So it's more than just trying to copy what you're seeing. So David, David, when you're doing still lifes, then does the gesture of light become predominant, what you're looking at? Yes, how, how light flows from place to place is what you're looking. So again, Joanne, you're not copying what you're seeing, which matching value, matching color, etc. You're instead of copying the object, you're trying to see the light falling on the object, whether it's a human object, still life object, landscape. So it you're developing a very different kind of conscious consciousness and awareness going beyond going beyond copying and seeing more universally and and that's where the true true enjoyment and fulfillment of painting and drawing is so do, so in a in a still life if because uh, you, you talk a lot about, you know, the, the painting telling you what it needs. So if you don't necessarily see the light, but you have this concept, you know, there is light, but you want more drama. So with the darks and then you want the flow of the light, but it doesn't mean that it has to be what's exactly there. So maybe you change the way the light is so that it flows better no okay because the fact of life joey light does flow it's it, but <clears throat> you have to see it as such if you're just focusing on painting an object you're developing a very narrow viewpoint but if you start to allow yourself, keep your mind open instead of constricted, you see the only way you're seeing that object is because it's lit up and the light on it, like water, is flowing from that object onto another object, you know, from the forehead to the nose to the cheek from the pear to the vase to the tabletop. So it is a way to open your mind and see more the actuality of reality rather than just constricted, this is a white vase, a green vase, etc. But it's illuminated by light. And it yeah. develops a different kind of <coughs> open-minded, consciousness has nothing to do with selling. <laughs> I had to throw that. <laughs> so. Uh, so we have a question. It says, uh, does long and short have to do with muscle tension? The long and short that you were showing in the yes, waist. Does it yes. have to do with muscle yes. tension? One si if one side is uh, contracted or tense, then the other side is compensating for that. It's stretched out. Yeah, You can have muscles on both sides doing the same thing. Um, muscles e are either in use or they're not. Can you show on um, Sherry's drawings? For, yeah, Sherry. Yeah. Sherry, what do you think? Can you? Um, sure. 
you know, uh, you could point to the one up on top with the colored background. This one. Uh, well, no, uh, yeah, that one, that one, because it's a standing, standing. Okay. Light. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she's wanting you to explain. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I, I, well, I think it'll help uh, the audience. Well, you see, like the, the tension on this side and this side is just kind of hanging loose. Then the knee, this is pulled down, you know, of course, the knee, but then this is the high short long long short you see you know short long long short long short you see so so that's yeah well i don't know if you can get but anyhow yeah <laughs> Is that good? It's all good. Okay. <laughs> it's all really good. Yes, it's all your relatives. Okay, so I guess that concludes my lecture, unless there is any other questions. I think Amandine, uh, Amandine, I think, didn't you have another question somebody asked? No. All right. No. I love the horse. Any arguments? <laughs> Any arguments? <laughs> no, I think you have everybody mesmerized, David. I, it's just, you know, the whole thing about not being afraid of, I think people are afraid, you know, that they have to put a line down and, and you, you actually, I, it's, for lack of a better word, it's kind of like a little squiggle, which helps them um, find their way. It's an easy way to find find where you need to go. Well, I think one thing that might help, uh, Joanne, if if the fear of making a mistake is the the one thing one of my teachers once told me, one of my drawing teachers, that you're drawing for the next drawing. So each drawing you're making is you're trying to learn, you're paying attention to what you've done, but you're always hoping that the next drawing will be the good one. So there's nothing, I mean, of course, fear, is the big problem with the human race, fear, insecurity, and we don't have the time to actually go into that. But I think if you just feel it's just a dumb little drawing and maybe the next one will be better, might be, a, a pathway to at least get over that kind of fear of making mistakes. And just the making mistakes already is a conditioned response. Just, we've been conditioned to think in those terms. But as I said, if you're drawing to learn how to draw, there's no such thing as a mistake. You know, if you look at any of the master drawings, so so-called masters, if they wanted to move a leg, they just redrew the leg. They didn't even bother to erase. They weren't thinking of being judged. They were just trying to learn to draw. So I hope that helps people get over as I say, fear is the biggest hurdle. 
Hey, we've got uh, Tamara wanted you to show the foreshortening of a hand. The foreshortening of a hand. Can you do that? You could do whatever you want, David. I'm happy. Well, again, everybody's happy. If you have, if, if you have a hand, you could do the same thing. You know, make it go. You're up the near to far, and then the thumb. You know, going out, and the palm going away, you know, the fingers, you know, you ease up on your pencil a little, but this finger is way out there, this one's, et cetera. And it, so it doesn't matter what, what it is you're drawing. If you're drawing movement through space, whether it's a finger, an arm, a horse, you see, it's going away. And then you can make the fingers, you know, do anything you want out there. Oh my God, you can't you can't say that enough. Yeah, you're you. The thing, Joanne, listeners, you are in control. You know, no. You make the line do what you want it to do. You know, as I say. What's all that's involved is seeing a particular way that you're not trying to make perfect drawings that'll be admired or etc. You're just having fun drawing. Edith O'Neill mentioned that that tornado helped her think more about volume rather than outline. Yeah. Yep. You just make lines, you know, and Try to draw what you see and what you see in a particular way, you see. Wonderful. Don't judge yourself. Don't think somebody's looking, oh, you're doing it for the sheer fun of drawing. Nobody starts at the top. <laughs> who, who was your most influential teacher? Learning is the most important thing in life. Learning is active. It's an active process. It means beyond. You're always wanting to go beyond. You haven't stopped. You haven't stopped learning. No, I haven't stopped. No, I know. No. It's amazing. No. Learning, learning is synonymous with living. If you stop learning, they start throwing dirt on you. <laughs> Someone was asking who your most influential teacher was. Your most influential teacher. Who was my most? I when at Parsons, I had, uh, uh, I think, four different drawing, four different teachers for drawing, and I loved all of them. I had. Stephen Rogers Peck for anatomy. We had six months of muscles, six months of bones. Uh, I had uh, Wallace Rosenbauer, my first drawing teacher. He, he was essentially a sculptor, but a wonderful, he just said marvelous things. Grattan Condon, who we had for figure and still life drawing. He made me aware of drawing objects and getting the tactile quality, the feeling of weight. You know, all, what I and Mrs. Marshall, but all my drawing teachers, none of them taught how to how to draw. They actually just opened one's mind to possibilities of what to look for. As I said, with Mr. Condon bringing in old tools and saying, telling us, try to capture the weight, how much this hammer weighs, how old this 
leather is on this old boot, you see. So they didn't say how to draw it or how to get weight. I mean, it, they might show you a little something, but they just opened your mind to seeing, which in a sense is what I'm trying to do now, of the most important thing is not making up your mind, not drawing conclusions. <laughs> Don't draw conclusions. That's <laughs> thing you shouldn't draw but just keep your mind open to possibilities what you want to capture when you're drawing what what you want to convey and you use any kind of pencil pen eraser paper surface to capture what you want to capture about what you're looking at. You see, that's what's, and if you're totally immersed in it, then there's no fear. Fear only comes about when you're not completely immersed in what you're doing. And you have that sensor in your brain looking over your shoulder. But if you're completely one-to-one -one immersed, then there's no, no space for that sensor to enter. So it's a, fear is a sign of partial consciousness, partial intention. But when you're completely into something, totally focused, passionate, then there's no fear, no space for fear to enter. I'm gonna draw this afternoon. Mm -hmm. You've you've inspired me. I don't you know I I I don't I don't draw enough. I love to draw. This has been this has been beyond beyond. I mean I feel bad that Sherry's sick. I mean I re I really do. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> All, listen, all husbands feel bad when their wives are sick because then they can't be taken care of. But anyway, aside from that, I feel, I hope Sherry gets better. I'm sorry she wasn't here, but this was a lesson in life, really. I think that's, I think you put everything into what you do. And I think sharing that with everybody has put a whole new spin on, on uh, I mean, drawing is life. So um, that's what I'm doing this afternoon. And we're going to find out what Eric's doing too today. <laughs> Get him inspired too. We, I uh, just want to also mention that um, uh, they can go to, I guess we can put it in the chat, Bright Light Fine Art to always see what you, you're up to. Um, and Eric has some of your videos. So we'll show that too. Um, but David, this has been beyond, beyond special. Um, I really appreciate you, uh, bailing me out. Well, bailing your wife out. Cause I wasn't going to let her live it down, but I mean, well, she is sick. She is sick. So but. everything I learned about drawing was from Sherry. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, she's not off the hook cause we're going to get her back too. So, yeah. um, but yeah, no, she's amazing. I, I learned, I learned from her. I, it's just like still lifes. I never liked still lifes. I watch you guys do still lifes and there's nothing still about the still lifes that you do. I mean, it's, it's, they're amazing. They're so alive and the, the drawings queen, are alive. The queen of the setups. Yeah, oh yeah. I've painted. I know that. I know that. I painted so many of her setups. <laughs> you walk in and steal them. Yes. Uh, so funny. You're so funny. Well, David, thank you so, so much. I know people will be uh, viewing this and viewing it again and again and again. I know I'm going to. And I love, I lo see, I call it squiggling because there's no pressure, no pressure. Just squiggle and you'll find, you'll find the line in the gesture. Yeah. Exactly, Joanne. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I got I've got some things I have to do for Eric because uh, he won't he won't invite me back if I don't even even though, you know, I love Eric. <laughs> I love Eric. 
<laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Okay, so now uh, I know everybody was thrilled about um, what. See this portrait, and David did this of me. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Anyway, so we want to talk about realism live. Uh, I just want we're gonna play you know play this thing, but I just want to say something about it. Um, this is the fourth one, and realism live just like. Plan Air Live, Watercolor Live, Pastel Live. It is incredible when you think about it because th they do it in such a professional way um, and who they get to come, but um, it, it, it's intense, it's fun. You, If you've never done it before, there's a real community that gets built and you'll have friends from this because of how they do it. It's just the way they do it. Um, it's very unique um, how Eric and his team, he's got, Eric has the best team in the world. Um, and I can attest to that. I know a lot of them. I've known them for a long time. Um, they love what they do. Uh, Eric trusts them completely and they run with it. And so realism live, I can't say, I can't say enough about. So it's from the 9th to the 11th, but it also starts on the 8th because they always do this pre-live thing. It's an essentials day. So if you haven't been painting uh, in a long time or, you, you know, you need to brush up or you want to learn, they have a, a, a pre-day thing. And they take you through um, a lot of basics. But this, uh, we're going to play the promo for this, but um, the names this year, there's to like off the chart. I mean, we have Bert Silverman, C.W. Mundy, Pat Fiorello, Steve Bauman, Cornelia Hernes. Uh, it goes on and on and on. And um, it's just a very unique, a unique way to boost up your painting. And that thing that I mentioned earlier, if you go to realism, I just wanna make sure I have the thing that um, that free, um, we put it up on the screen before. The, the Yeah, that's it, the ebook. I'm gonna sign up for that myself. It's 10 steps to become a high level figure and portrait artist. You go to realismlive.com slash ebook. So, um, and then let's see what else I want. I, I, oh, oh, don't want to forget. If you use the code Mangi, M-A-N-G-I, I saw it here. Um, yeah, there it is. 10% off with a code. I, I don't know if I get anything for it. I'll probably just get, um, oh, you know, I brought my birthday cake. I, I, I brought my birthday cake. Here. Um. There's my birthday cake. One of several. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so anyway, we need to find out where Eric is. Hey, Eric Rhodes here, Plein Air Magazine. We are at Fall Color Week. We have 101 painters from all over the United States and we're here painting. We're set up at a camp, it's a kid's camp in the Adirondacks and we're spread out all over. But look at the view, it's just pretty incredible. And uh, we have been blessed with really great weather. It's gonna be 80 degrees tomorrow. We wish you could come, but we're already sold out. So don't come, okay? But next time, you can come next time. Anyway, we're here, here just uh, a week of painting. We're gonna paint all throughout the Adirondack Mountains. This is our first painting for the day, so it's gonna get even better. Thanks for watching, bye. Amazing, right? He already looks rested. A day of painting, there, there's never a bad day if you're painting, right? There he is. There he is. Okay, wait, I gotta blow out my cake. I gotta blow out my, here we go. Happy birthday to me. 
This is the first of many cakes to come. I'm in Dean. Did I miss anything? I want to make sure because I love Eric. I well, uh, although I love Lori more, but don't tell him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, you did amazing, and happy birthday, Joanne. Uh, you did great. You're a great host. I think like I'm gonna have you all the time now. We don't need Eric anymore. <laughs> you don't need. Eric. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really funny. Okay. Except, right. except I don't think he can afford me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> All right, so do we cover, oh my, what about my videos? We're not done. Oh, okay, there you go. Fine art of painting horse portraits. And then the classic, ah, the fine art of painting dog portraits. That is a fun video. And if you have one, just get another one. What the heck? And if you have friends, just, you know, Christmas is coming. So it's a great gift. It really is. Um, it's uh, I, I make it so easy for everybody. It's just like how David made drawing. I mean, David and Cherry, they make drawing. Just you, you believe you can do it. <laughs> and then, of course, you put your pencil down on the paper and it gets a little hard. But um, no, I love I love squiggling. And uh, I use a, um, you know what I love to use is the micron pens and watercolor because I'll squiggle with the micron pen. You know, you can't erase. And then you throw some wash on there and it, you, you would not believe how good it looks. It looks like you know what you're doing when, when you don't. So I recommend that to everybody. Like, you know, if you're traveling, take a micron pen and a small pad and a watercolor and you, you just squiggle away and throw some washes on and you'll, you'll, you'll love it. You'll love it. To drawing. A lot of people are afraid of drawing, but I don't think, how can you be afraid if you're just squiggling away and you're not trying to make the perfect, perfect drawing. So that's my, that's David does, he has recipes. So that's my recipe for today is get drawing, start squiggling and enjoy. I'm going to do that this afternoon. I really am. Uh, I have this painting back here. Actually, it's over here that I have to um, do a little something to. And uh, I just got back from a, um, Istanbul and Santorini. And my luggage, that, that was last night, my luggage showed up today. So uh, <laughs> I guess I'll also be doing some laundry. Anyway, tomorrow, tomorrow we have my other, see today was supposed to be my bestest friend the whole week. And then poor Sherry got sick, I feel bad for her. Well, not that bad because now I had David. And, but tomorrow I have Kathy Anderson. Yes, it's gonna be amazing. Yes, how to design a complicated still life. Wouldn't you love to know how to do that? I'm always, even when I think I know, I don't know. So um, we got some fun stories about Kathy. She's a very, very, very good friend of mine. Um, and it can't, it can't be a bad show. Uh, it'll be every bit as good as today. Well, maybe not as good as today. Oh, don't tell her I said that. No, I love Kathy. She's very, she's so talented, but she works really hard at it and she just keeps getting better and better. So that's tomorrow. And Amandine, did I miss anything? Cause you know, I'll probably, there'll probably be a report card. <laughs> like, you know, they'll be ticking off. Did she do this? Did she do that? I don't let me know. check. Let me check. Anyway. Uh, no, you all set. Yeah. And Kathy, <laughs> Kathy can't get sick tomorrow. Kathy no, can't. cannot get sick. No, but she Although, might, she might well, bring her cat. She might bring her cat, Paco. <laughs> that would be great. And if she's sick, we'll bring David back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's got I no feeling. I, I, I don't know if he loves me that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just want to say one other thing about Sherry and David. Um, my pain, my uh, abilities grew uh, once I really spent time with them. Uh, I got to be a better painter. People, people like that. Artists like that. Um, I think that's what you're going to find with Realism Live, that there's just so much opportunity uh, to learn little snippets of things that will relate to you that may not relate to me or to someone else, but they'll relate to you. Some artist out of that list 
will just a light bulb will go off and you're you'll hey, listen it's it's art it's painting it's drawing whatever it is that's what we feel we are fulfilled from that and these are all the opportunities eric always that's the one thing about eric um is that he's made a lot of opportunities for people and and these this art school live is free i mean come on uh you just can learn so much and, and it's uh, replays and you got all the replays. So anyway, um, I think we're, I think we're tuning out. Are we tuning out? Amandine, did you know Amandine had a baby and she's right back to work? <laughs> no, we are all set. We'll see everybody tomorrow. And thank Great. you so much. Uh, you, you are an amazing host. We're very lucky to have you. Oh, thanks. Well, well, I was sweating it out at uh, 10 of 11 today. <laughs> That's about when we found out that Sherry was sick. I'm mean, like, what? And then Amandine said, well, here you have three options. <laughs> One, we you can be on for five minutes and then we could do a replay. Two, you could do the demo. Three, mm -hmm. which my palate's not even out because I just got back. And three, we could just cancel. I'm like, well, canceling's not an option. Me painting today is not an option. I, I mean, had to try something, but everybody <laughs> would be extremely disappointed. And and the replay was like, I, but I've been telling everybody we were doing mm. something. So I didn't want to disappoint. And I think we went above and beyond. But we're going to have Sherry back, right, Amandine? Yes, we are. When, when she's 100% because mm -hmm. she's, as David said, she's the queen of drawing. I don't think he said queen, but she's the qu trust she's the queen. Yes. She's the queen. Yes, yeah, she is the queen. So, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Same place, same dial, right? Yep. See you tomorrow. Okay.